Thank you very much for the very friendly introduction that I couldn't uh, hear, but we we had some problems with the technicalities, and we needed some time for that. But thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation as well, that I am able to be here and speak to you. I have a presentation here called the uh, energy reform of the federal government is going to lead to the industrialization of Germany, and I want to prove this hypothesis. As you see here, it's uh, trying to show the problem uh, as a picture of about how Fukushima is a problem in the world. You see the radioactivity in Europe, uh, which could lead to uh, a burden of uh, products from Japan. And because of that, you had, of course, uh, destruction, uh, disturbance in the delivery chain. And you had small effects on the pro productivity of Germany. And in uh, terms of energy policy, uh, what that would do to uh, the federal government in terms of industry, uh, this is what I want to be showing in my presentation. I've uh, actually shortened my presentation, and this is called the climate does not uh, have anything to do with CO2, and you cannot protect the climate. I want to prove this. It, it is together with uh, the political intentions uh, the head of uh, the Potsdam Institute of uh, Climate Investigations, Schellenhuber, uh, because the policy has nothing to do with uh, climate protection. It's about climate policy. We are distributing uh, the uh, r riches of the earth uh, by doing these policies. So then comes uh, decarbonization of the world economy, uh, one of the main uh, ideas. And this is an interview he gave in the new, uh, the Neue Zürcher Zeitung, and also in the FAZ on the 25th of November 2010. We've had climate change ever since uh, the, the Earth has existed. Just looking at the last 500 million years, you know, we had an ice age. You, you have many types of uh, uh, influences. It's, of course, starting with the sun, uh, the, the eruptions on the sun, uh, sun winds, uh, particle radiation, changes in, in the uh, rotation of the Earth, uh, the perturbations, um, the, the comets, volcanoes, um, under Earth, uh, 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 under under ocean volcanoes, aerosols, biogenes, uh, CO2 emissions, and of course the thirteenth point is uh, anthropogenic CO2 emissions. That has many effects um, on the climate system, which leads to perturbations. You have a number of uh, insecurity insecurities. You have. Uh, dependencies and positive and negative uh, uh, back um, uh, effects, methods of uh, you know averaging out the, the statistics in terms of time and uh, geographically, and physical and chemical uh, um, effects. Here, you're looking at the non-CO2 um, uh, fossil fuels, rather that the sun activities is what is uh, pushing the global temperatures. So you see the, the Arctic temperatures as blue and the solar activity in the red. So see the underneath the, the uh, continued intensification of hydrocarbon use 
and it has no connection. And so now this is the theme that I want to actually get into the meat of. So in the next picture, you see the break in the use of nuclear power uh, since the middle of March this year. Uh, in the middle picture, on the 16th of March, uh, they decided uh, to have a moratorium on the use of nuclear power. They took off uh, nuclear powers uh, offline and they plan to take all nuclear power plants offline by 2020. So on this picture, you see that uh, nuclear power has uh, is, is actually being used 22.5% by the whole economy. And so since March, uh, we've had 6.8% uh, taken out of that part. So in the next picture, you see that the energy concept of the federal government, uh, as it was in, S in September 2010, the black curve means the reduction of uh, CO2 emissions until 2050. Uh, they want to reduce by 80%. And the other curves show the part, the, the, how much uh, uh, renewable energy will be used by that time, how that grows. And so the green, you see how much uh, reduction of power we're supposed to have um, in that. And then uh, primary energy uh, consumption should actually be reduced by that time up there. And this is, this is what the federal government has as its goal. So you see a radical energy reform uh, as it is, it is envisioned by 2050 with all its consequences. So you'd only have 20% of fossil fuels. And uh, you see that nuclear power is supposed to be used until 2030, but, uh, but now last week that has all changed. So this is not actually what is foreseen by the government. There are a whole slew of energy uh, scenarios, how it would change till 2050. For example, they believe that uh, uh, electricity will be reduced and we'd have to import it to Germany uh, in amounts that are unimaginable. And so we have to drastically reduce our consumption in Germany. So, so you see, t in 2050, you you have the amount of in, uh, renewable energy growing. Um, from 2008, you had 92.3 um, uh, terawatt hours, um, and now you have 285.2 terawatt hours by 2050. So, a huge increase. So you have the scenario for leaving nuclear power by the so-called Ethic Commission. So uh, we uh, used to have 20.5 gigawatt uh, of, from nuclear power that was online. And now with the moratorium, we've had to do without 8.5 gigawatt minus 41%. And already, with with the moratorium uh, on the on the 16th of March, we've started importing energy. Up until now, we had the safest and securest um, uh, network. Uh, we, in terms of of uh, minutes, we had 18.3 minutes. In Germany, it's much more insecure in, in Austria, Hungary, France, uh, Great Britain, Portugal, and Spain. And of course, if uh, we get out of nuclear power, you're going to see these blackouts in Europe increasing. 
CO2 emissions until 2020 have to be reduced by minus 80 percent. Some say minus 90 percent. That means that in uh, terms uh, looking at it from 1990, two billion tons of CO2 are going to be reduced uh, to 246. And you, you'll see how many nuclear power plants and so on that we had back then and today. Um, CO2 emissions, greenhouse gases um, that were reduced uh, in terms of industry, and of course houses, private um, greenhouse gas emission, how that is being drastically reduced. So that that has consequences is of course clear in terms of the price of uh, the housing market, because what that means for housing is really clear. For example, you have all the uh, clubs and, and uh, organizations that are fighting this energy concept know that the this energy concept uh, already in, in, uh, in the fall of last year in terms of um, redoing all the uh, houses, um, they, they are really going to uh, be overwhelmed by the financing of this. And of course, the, the rent is going to go up dramatically. The next question about uh, renewable energies is the question of the increase of price of electricity until 2020. Uh, so that will double the price of uh, electricity in the industrial uh, sector. Development aid from France, that is the title on this. Uh, we, from the, from the 16th of March, we dramatically increased the amount of electricity we received from France. Um, so now we had a minus 150 gigawatt per, per hour. And so we need from the uh, Czechia and France, um, basically 1.3 to 60.3 uh, gigawatt um, hours a day. And that also is because in summer we also need very cold water and uh, that's why some nuclear power plants are being taken offline, which would mean that you could also start having blackouts if the summer would get even hotter than May. Uh, we had summer starting in Germany already in May and uh, I don't know what August is going to look like. Nuclear power plants are being built all over the planet despite Fukushima. As you see on this map, you see what's happening all over the world, the Renaissance. At the point of um, the problems in Fukushima when we were getting out of nuclear power plants, uh, you had 442 online, 62 uh, being uh, built and 287 being planned and by um, at the, the, the end of, of two generations, we'll have 791 nuclear plants. And even if we uh, shut down our 70 nuclear power plants, that is not going to change very much in this picture. So in the United States, you have 104 that are working, one uh, being built and 32 being planned. In France, 58 uh, working, uh, one being, being built and one being planned. Japan, 54 uh, in working and two uh, being built in 11 and uh, being planned, etc. In Germany, uh, Mr. Sikha Gabriel, who is the head of the Social Democratic Party, was saying we don't want a luxurious uh, um, shutdown of, of, of atomic energy. And a lot of people, he said, would uh, profit from this, except the Germans, if the uh, federal government shut down the nuclear power plants. 
And you've actually heard more and more coming out, uh, for example, Thatcher, the head of Daimler-Benz, uh, he came out and said that um, energy-intensive industries are going to leave Germany because they don't have a chance to compete any longer if they stay in Germany. So you now have the uh, so-called energy mix today and uh, in the future without nuclear power. So in 2020, the scenario is that you'll have an increase um, of uh, 0.7% uh, increase every year. Uh, so you would actually have 666 billion uh, kilowatt hours, for example, in coal. Um, you, you, you would have to uh, increase that uh, a lot. And then you would have renewables, gas, and others. And you have to compare that with 2010, which I showed you before. Uh, we had 621 billion kilowatt hours. Um, the idea is to have wind energy from the North Sea. Uh, offshore uh, windmills, uh, we formulated this goal, but it, 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 it is very uh, backward in comparison to what is needed. So you see um, what Germany has to produce um, 100 megawatt. Um, the other European countries like Denmark, Netherlands, Belgium have many, many more um, offshore uh, windmills than we have. And I believe that um, in the future it's going to slow down, actually, than these people propagating the, uh, nucle uh, the energy reform want. So on the right-hand side of the picture, you see the installed um, production in Germany. It, it has drastically increased. It has doubled in a year of photovoltaic energy. Uh, we believe that this type of development is going to continue until 2011. So photovoltaic is going to have to increase in terms of energy production um, of, of 17,000 megawatt, which is just 7.9% of our energy con consumption in Germany, which is a very small amount. Uh, and that would mean that would extremely expensive endeavor. And from our point of view, it doesn't make any sense because we don't have much sun. And you see uh, that in in 2010 you had uh, it just producing, for example, 16.5 uh, uh, terawatt hours. So. In, in, in a certain sense, you you have less than 10% in terms of wind. You have 15.8%, uh, what they are expecting in terms of an increase. And uh, as we all know, we don't have so much sun in this country, like in Spain or in Northern Africa. It really is up to you to decide if that makes sense or not. And But what is up to us is if we pay for it. And this is uh, the map that should show you how that should all work. So in the north, you see um, how much sun we get in terms of the colors. Uh, watts per quadrat, uh, um, uh, meters, uh, square meters. So you would actually get 300 maximum in the Sahara of uh, watts per uh, cubic uh, square meter. But of course, you have the problem that the sun doesn't shine at night. So that's also relative. 
In the next picture, you see Desert Tech, how the sun and the solar energy is supposed to uh, uh, be used for world consumption. But, you know, bringing it to Germany over 4,000 kilometers, you would lose so much energy that you probably will not get anything out of it. So now I want to prove um, what I was saying in the previous uh, picture. So you see wind and photovoltaic uh, uh, consumption from the 1st to the 31st of January 2010. And you see how wind and photovoltaics are just you know, the little yellow parts, that's extremely small, little dot in terms of how much it actually is uh, consumed in comparison to normal consumption. And if you look at the whole year taken as on average uh, with the change in seasons, it's not realistic, it's, it's not tenable. In the lower picture, uh, you see uh, that wind and photovoltaic from the 1st to the 31st of July 2010, you have the yellow parts actually being much, much larger. And for us, it looks much, much too small. And of course, in Spain, it's more. But such energy production cannot be relied upon. And uh, this type of energy production uh, will not, uh, will definitely not be able to satisfy the needs of heavy industry. So that's why they're going to leave Germany. If you actually take a poll of the Germans, what in their position, in their opinion, uh, would ensure uh, five years of our electricity supply? So, most people believe that 71% think that solar power is what is going to help Germany in terms of energy production, and reality 0.7%. So, that's obviously something that just comes from the media, that, that, that the exaggerated opinion of uh, what the population then adopts. For example, in wind, here you see that most people thought that wind would bring 66% of energy uh, consumption when it's 6.6 .6 in reality, hydro 37%, in reality 3.4%. So the picture in the population is very erroneous in terms of what the reality is uh, for what you need a modern society uh, in the future. And I always say that fault of a tank is a fraud of the neighbor. For example, if you look at this house, which has uh, solar power cells on the roof, and you look at the neighbor who doesn't have a single solar panel, so it actually the neighbor who finances the electricity production, and you could say the neighbor could also have solar power cells on their head, on their roof. And then it would, at the end of the day, be up to uh, the person paying the rent. So you can think of think of it as being the poor, uh, the lower strategies of society paying for this energy form. So I want to explain to you the development of the amount of electricity and at the end how much um, you would get out of it. So, you have the subsidies um, in terms of uh, the brown curve here uh, is showing how it was from 2000-2009 and up to 2012. And uh, we believe that if you actually have a lot of solar power. Uh, this, this subsidies are going to be much, much higher than what is shown here. 
So electricity is basically going to get much, much more expensive. Uh, we have 1998 to 2011. Uh, you have a comparison between normal energy production and uh, so-called renewables. And today, the renewables are 25%. And if you look at what's going to be to be 2011, you're going to see that increase dramatically to, to in 2011 when it's 46% uh, for the individual. But when you look at uh, in the industrial consumption of power, uh, because they use more electricity, then they actually have a larger reduction of uh, the price. So you see that the costs are, of course, lower. but. Even though this is the case, um, you have the industry uh, paying um, 8.5%, and now uh, by next year they're going to be paying 4.25 cents per kilowatt hour an increase of 32%, and the question is if the German industry is going to be able to pay for that. So there are newer uh, calculations on this. So they, they would basically be paying for uh, more than double of the, what they're paying today. So the uh, capacity of Germany to compete on the market with this increase of prices is going to be um, exponentially growing. So nuclear power in the south of Germany um, is 58% uh, of the consumption. Um, so they have around 10% renewable energy in the south of Germany and by 2020 this is the uh, government the local government uh, concepts this the CSU um, they want to have mostly gas 46 percent um, winds solar um, has to increase to 10 and 16 percent respectively and if you think about how uh, in times of uh, uh, cold where there's no sun or when there's no wind uh, you have to have a uh, huge uh, transportation uh, infrastructure to bring uh, a wind from the north when the sun doesn't shine in, in, in the south and so, of course, that is only finance, uh, financially feasible if um, you increase the price of electricity. So, of course, the windmills are uh, more in the north of Germany. Uh, in the south, Baden-Württemberg and Saarland, uh, you don't see so many in comparison, but I'm sure in the future they're going to increase and these 46% uh, of renewable energies that they want in the south, they're going to uh, have to do some serious investment in the, uh, in the countryside. So the comparison of uh, energy prices for energy intensive industries in 2008 shows us that um, only Italy uh, has a higher value of uh, that. In talking to our Italian colleagues, you have um, you have uh, a lot of uh, uh, people pay. Uh, um, 
uh, more for for their uh, electricity than they than they have to. So they actually get an overfinancing. Uh, otherwise, uh, in the other countries, you see how the prices are lower, and in Germany, it's pretty high. So, in terms of decarbonization, the silent death of the industry has already begun. So, 60% of steel in Germany, uh, you uh, get it from uh, iron ore from Brazil, for example. And so, uh, it's very CO2 intensive because you have to bring it here. And in, in terms of getting it from its uh, raw material phase to actual steel, it's a very uh, intensive um, process. There is, of course, another process that you could use coming from recycling of steel. So uh, you have 32% of that coming from this 14.6 million tons. Um, and in the amount of emissions there is uh, much, much less, 360 kilogram tons. But we don't have enough old steel to uh, enable to, uh, to be able to bring that to uh, the, the raw steel phase. And so we need to actually have to use this uh, raw iron phase to the steel phase, which is more energy intensive. So you have the uh, chemical aspect of the use of um, carbon um, in turning uh, iron ore, iron oxide, to iron, you emit a lot of CO2. So, in order to get um, uh, the, the, the actually 95.3% uh, iron uh, for this process, we need to use 414 kilograms, uh, kilogram tons in order to, um, of carbon to do that. So the reduction of greenhouse gases um, to 80%, uh, less than 80% of what it is now is, brings the danger of deindustrializing Germany. So you have the whole economy from 1990 to 2050. Uh, that is the reduction um, of 80%, so we would only be able to produce 246 uh, uh, ton, million tons uh, of steel as comparison in comparison to 1.232 million tons in 1990. So um, we are not going to be able to compete as an industrialized, na industrialized nation. So the energy intensive industries, which ones are they? I am showing some of these here, aluminum, iron and steel, uh, glass, um, basic chemical processes, uh, metals, paper, cement, and you know, with aluminum and cement, those are the most intensive, uh, energy intensive processes, you know, over 40%, 50% of the energy costs in 2008. The CO2 emissions of the energy intensive industries in 1990 um, to 2008. Um, and of course, green is, is the, uh, the, the goal. So we want to go to minus 80%. So we are showing that basically these industries would not survive. So looking at the costs that we are going to have to deal with uh, in terms of 2010 to 2013, uh, we calculated here that uh, looking at the steel industry, looking at 2010, you have 415 um, 
in terms of uh, CO2 uh, trade, uh, you, you, you get 1.8 billion euros um, that would have to be uh, invested, this, this increase uh, from 415 to, to a million to 1,765 million euros. That would mean that the um, CO2 price jumping that much, uh, doubling, uh, a lot of these uh, companies would just have to leave the country. Uh, Germany alone cannot save the climate. That is the uh, title of this uh, uh, Frankfurt Allgemeine Zeitung article. And I don't believe that in a so-called uh, ethic commission is supposed to uh, chart out the, the energy program for a country for the next 50 years uh, is, is, is untenable. So in China, they have an energy hunger. Um, what you see in brown is China, uh, 1965 to uh, 2010. Um, in terms of uh, their their oil equivalent in million tons, and compared to the U.S. and the European Union, I could show you steel, I could show you gas, uh, nuclear power, and so on and so forth. And that has increased, of course, uh, increased their uh, capacity to compete on the international market, and we are doing the exact opposite. So. The, uh, the commission that is uh, responsible for economic questions um, are want a structural change away from energy intensive old industries for long term and otherwise uh, sensible uh, industries. And there you see really what the wrong way is. So you see in this picture, the success of the German industry, what it would be without um, their their uh, their raw material basis in terms of uh, electro uh, uh, technique, in terms of uh, steel, um, in terms of uh, machine tools, car industry, and. Uh, uh, building industry, it's just not possible um, in terms of being able to finance that. So, im focus, um, industrial country Germany, there was a report from the uh, Minister Brüdele on the industrial political concept. And so, as you see, uh, the, you see what what part of, of uh, the industry from 1991 to 2008. You see, Germany has to stay an industrialized nation. So, if you compare France and the United States and the, the U.S., um, they are using. Uh, very, they're, they're using very, very little um, energy, and that's why they, they found it very difficult to get out of the crisis um, as compared to Germany, for example. That's why we are out of the crisis. Most companies um, get outside consultants to um, do their paperwork, so um, that's why a lot of this is is not in here. Uh, so the 33 percent of uh, the overhead that we have in terms of services uh, is is unable to be uh, sustained without the industry. I also wanted to show how we came out of the crisis much faster than the other countries. 
Um, in 2009, um, the, uh, the employment went down drastically, but then it came up uh, very, very fast in 2010. And, and you see in which, on the last picture, in which industries, in textiles, chemicals, uh, um, electronics and so on, metal, that that was where jobs are created. So, in terms of the costs of production, you find, when you compare France to Germany or France, Germany, and Great Britain, you have a turning point in 2004 um, where the Red-Green Coalition uh, really did something uh, in order to bring this about, otherwise it would not have been possible. So, let's look at China. China becoming um, uh, the export champion of the world. Um, you've had the uh, blue curve being the US, the, the white one being Germany, and the red being China, and of course, till 2015, they are going to increase their amount of uh, exports. Uh, we are no longer the leading um, exporter of the world. And if we are actually uh, wanting to keep our social welfare in Germany, I think the Chinese are not going to be uh, stoppable. So, the uh, decision last week has sealed our fate of the economy. So, you have the uh, quiet um, uh, disappearance of the industry. Um, you see Tussenkrupp, Arubis, Norsk, Kudro, SKL, Carbon, and many, many uh, energy-intensive companies are turning their backs on Germany. This is an article in Handelsblatt and uh, different um, factories, invest in, uh, investments are being done elsewhere or being built elsewhere. And the German energy policy is leading to a uh, slow industrialization as top managers warn. So what do the people in, in the population say about the energy concept? It seems that most of the people don't really care what the what the uh, policy what the policy is in terms of them uh, wishing that the that politics has a consensus. The problem priorities are are seen as completely different uh, in terms of the uh, population. Uh, they're more interested in school and education, healthcare and uh, securing jobs and, and, and uh, helping the elderly and uh, the, the stability of the euro. So the collective madness uh, comes from the, 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 the misleading of, of the, uh, the will of the population and also the wrong uh, interpretation of Fukushima and uh, they, they have no uh, they have no longing for renewable energies and the false interpretation of the voting um, results. The reform of the uh, energy reform in Germany is going to lead to industrialization to Germany, as I want to just uh, bring back to the point. Yeah. 